This is your weekend market recap for Friday, December 2nd, 2022. Hey everyone, this is my channel to help investors and traders develop a probability-based mindset to succeed. Also try and keep friends informed of what's going on in the markets and the economy, and also a little real estate content as well. CDXP Realty, aka The Trading Agent, this is your weekend market recap for, man, December 2nd, 2022. Hopefully you had a good week, pretty interesting, up and down, all over the place, near the end, but we, as we've always said, the feds are in the sweet spot, we anticipate the market to continue to rise, maybe tax loss selling's over. People worried about the VIX. People worry about a million things. I said it and I say it again. The feds are in the sweet spot. Unless commodities go ripping higher, they don't have to raise rates as quickly. They can just kind of sit here, do nothing, pretend to pause, slow their rate hike potential. Everything's good for them in that sense. Jobs, stable-ish. Mm, these job numbers are a little sneaky. A lot of people adding multiple jobs. I don't know if that's necessarily good. People dropping out of the workforce, not necessarily good. But overall near term and i'm not talking about like the long term because i think most people know like long term very bearish i don't think we end without a vix spike into the 40s or 50s what up eric yeah without a spike into the 40s or 50s this is probably going to play out more like the 70s slash 2000 slash 2008 all combined which will bring a mishmash of what volatility the markets won't make new highs they'll make new lows the final leg down will be the blowout but then after that you might have what we consider me personally knowing how the market's like a, a, a bottoming out time correction where the market might not move very much for a long period of time. Could that be a year? Could be 18 months? We don't know. But again, as the traders that we are, and people complain about this sometimes, like we're always trying to evolve. We're trying to pivot. Like if you're wrong, admitting it, moving on, moving on to the next thing. We're always trying to, you know, go through the evidence as is to evolve to the next trade potential. Because again, if you marry your theses and you think you're always going to be right, I can guarantee your outcome in trading is going to be one outcome. Blow up. You will absolutely blow the hell up at some point. Because that's the thing. You're going to be wrong. You're going to be wrong. We're all going to be wrong here. No one's perfect. So I appreciate everybody. Um, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe. Hit the like button. Notification bell. You would get the notifications that we are running. A live chat. <clears throat> again, watch the videos, if you have questions, you're newer, and you're like, oh, I'm not sure, like, what about what's going on in the markets? I'm telling you, I've got a video for basically everything. And if I don't, tell me, I'll make a video. And I've been doing this for way too long. I'm very familiar with the odds and the probabilities and things. I can give you the best insights that I have. And now people say, like, oh, what does that mean? Okay, well, do you, do you understand how the first and last three trading days of the month, how that affects the market? Do you understand typically how doji patterns work? Jobs days, typically dojis, not always. Again, reviewing the past. People love to like stare at their computers and watch the now and telling it's a waste of time. The past is where all the value is, right? Because it's all repeating patterns. There's nothing new in the market. The participants are the same idiots as they were 100 years ago. It's just the markets change, right? The dynamics change. Momentum, idiocy, fear, fear, FOMO, all that stuff. It's all repeating patterns. It all plays out in the markets. Also, too, if you wanted to... Get the link to the Discord room. It is available for one week. One week. And then after that, shut off. If you join the Discord room, you please be in, get involved. Because if you're not involved, you're going to get booted out. I can just tell you that now. We're not, we're not like, a lot of people come in there and they spam it or they come in, they copy and paste this stuff and share it. And it's like never giving credit to the people who are actually creating the content. Or they just hang out and think that me and some of my friends are Jim Cramer. We're going to tell you how to trade all the time. No, 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 no. This is, it's a, I would say it's like a monarchy with the, the family. Like you get into the family because the goal is to the family being what? 30 people. I mean, not, it's not a discord room, a thousand. No, it's going to be 30, 40, 50 people that, you know, the 5% that survive helping each other out. Video suggestion topic, paper trade sizing. Um, okay. Maybe at some point paper trade sizing. I mean, I would trade, and this is the thing, if anyone who's familiar with what I say when practicing, you treat $1 like you treat $1,000, you treat one share like you treat 1,000 shares, you're going to do fine. Because if you can make money with small amounts, then the decimal points just move. But if you have the same respect for money without gambling, <clears throat> you will do well. You will, So if you want a paper trade, correct sizing, well, again, it depends on your accounts. You know, Like we talked about, options accounts should be 10% of your stock account. Because at any point, you can blow out your options account. Happens a lot. If you're wrong, especially when you're near-dated. 
going big. But that's why we always talk about extracting money out of it. That's a good topic. Maybe I'll try to do it live, my man. Just try to do it live so I can get the questions. Because I have, again, if you're in the Discord room, there's tons of side reference resources. Where's the options room? I've got the rules. There's 18 of them. <clears throat> Where are they? Somewhere in here. There you go. 18 rules for my option trading. So keep an eye on that. Let's get into the stocks. Let's get into the market. This is the Bitcoin. Man, oh, I, why is this happening now? Every time you start trade view, it just like goes right to whatever you it was at. I've said this. I'm going to say it again. People don't like to hear this. Dead money. Dead money. Time correction and a price correction. Now, if you decide you have to trade Bitcoin and you have a good feel for the market and you like to watch paint dry, maybe, know the levels. <clears throat> We've talked about the levels of importance. I mean, you're right at one right now. Does it hold? If it holds, good. Could it bounce? I mean, you could argue that this formation down here is like a head and shoulders bottom. Here's your left shoulder with heavy volume, a retest with lighter volume, and then volume building up. Doesn't look bearish, but again, I don't trust it. It's kind of like, you know, I cut my teeth trading in uh, gold, and gold, let's just say, is one of the hardest assets to trade by far. And so sometimes you see these formations, you go, okay, I trust it, but I also have my stop, I also have a thought process that it might not be seasonally correct, it might not be moving fast, there might be a thousand other variables that lead you to go, well, the more I'm up, the less I own. Trade around a position, know the levels, and know them well. Do I want to like dig deep into the levels on Bitcoin? Eh, get over 20,000 and see what happens. Maybe that's the best way to think about it. WTI crude. All right. OPEC, here we come. Virtual meeting. Probably going to do what? Doesn't matter. How many times in the last two weeks since oil hit our projected upside of the channel as it's pulled back? What rumor have you not heard about OPEC? They're cutting. They're increasing. They're doing nothing. It's all priced in. I don't give a crap. It is all priced in, in my opinion. This 76 area, man, if I go back, even to 2005, I'm not going to do it. This area matters. You know, that's my favorite new t-shirt. That area matters. Like someone's like, oh, you should make that. No, nah, whatever. This zone matters, whatever you want to call it. Think about it. Here you go. Hits the resistance, backs off today. <sighs> Trade, you got to trade around this stuff. The volatility with the headlines and the bull snap, bull crap, you know, not bull or bear crap, but just, you know, BS, it's it's just everywhere. It's just absolutely everywhere. So if you have any thoughts about, like, what's going to happen next with oil, 2 million barrels, 200 million barrels of SPR refilled, I think, about approximately. I mean, there's no, you know, the supply in, in, in itself drained here in America. Not uh, Russia's not going to be pumping it out. The BRICS hate, let's call it what it is, hate, uh, hate us, us as in the U.S. It doesn't really seem likely that the price action is going to break below here unless the market absolutely implodes and the market tanks. Which, again, if we're in the sweet spot, I've said this theme and I've said it over and over. The feds are cruising. They are loving life. Well, if the only way that things start changing and so that the feds have to actually start thinking about increasing rates again is what? Commodities start taking off and they start moving at least mid 90s, probably low 100s. And guess what? If Russia is just sitting here quiet because they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah try to cap our oil. See that. See how much you'll get. Nothing. That's going to put some weird circumstances in the oil market. Now, again, does anyone know anything certainty? No, but we know the levels. We absolutely know the levels. Got to know them. Not gas. Oh, I bought some yesterday, and I feel like an idiot. <clears throat> Didn't add any today at all. Not at all. I, I mean, again, wheat, cotton. Wheat, cotton. Wheat, cotton. Oil feels like wheat, cotton. That killed Livermore. Maybe that's not gas. We'll find out. We're at levels where I'm like, Ugh, we better hold. We better hold. I don't. I don't want to see UNG get smoked down, and I don't need to see this thing in the low sixes. Higher in oil prices should hold up natural gas prices. It's cold. It's hot. Whatever. I mean, the free port, LNG port, the build, saying the building of inventory. 
you have to remind remember in your mind prices manipulated low for too long does not do good for price action later because now all of a sudden people are going to take inventory off at these low prices and there's going to be nothing like it just floods out right near term and hence why it's probably pricing in but future oil and gas reserves i mean you're not going to again people are going to try to sweep up as much as they can at these current prices that's going to come off the market at those low prices and the only way to what to get more is going to be what all right well if you have a limited supply you're gonna to have to see the price rise to get more inventory for people to sell right i personally believe <clears throat> we talked about the broadening pattern on that gas i think the bottom's in it's just it looks like a nice rolling uptrend now a lot of people say december can be pretty crappy not i get that Trying to compare this year to any other year, it's just again we don't we don't we don't have the factors in play that we have had in my lifetime of trading when it comes to oil and gas. I mean, I did not live during the 1970s oil embargoes, but I do know what happened. <laughs> we had stagflation and we had oil and gas go pretty much nutty everywhere, up down up down, resolving higher right for a period of time, putting the market in the dumper. At this point, trade your position. I'm just telling you, be safe, be thoughtful, don't marry it. Because this thing could rip your heart out. Could absolutely rip your heart out. Man, had to hold 19, it did today. All right, the dollar. You're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. Nobody here was calling for the dollar to get smoked down to the 200 day and the 0.382. Nobody, nobody. Again, I'll pat myself on the back. I didn't, but it's great. I didn't really, didn't do anything for me at this point. Didn't short the dollar, but it said that would help the market go higher. Talked about this doji here. Again, people are like, oh, let me show you this. I'm like, go watch the videos. I don't delete tweets. I don't delete anything. Because I want people to realize, like, I can be wrong. And when I'm right, I'm right. It's just I'm right as well. The odds are more likely that I will be because I use my experience. I don't overtrade. Here you go. We failed the trend line. We said this was an interesting formation because it's like, is this a novice gap doji channel high? Sometimes we talk about it. you have to like you have to test levels, trend lines, certain things over and over to create a pattern of certainty in the market, which is broken by the market. Look at that. All these people bought the dollar, got trapped. Now you're down near the lows. This one's hard near term because again, could it play off in the twenty? Could it play out in the twenty eight range for a while? <clears throat> Most times, they're not. The bottoms are you know they're not like one day events. And even if it is, like say down here in last December, January, you got to retest later, right? So if the dollar spikes, maybe you get the pullback in the market. But this is where I keep thinking in my, my mind, what's going to cause the dollar to spike? It better be something probably relating to what? Commodities. The brick saying something, doing something. Wow, the TLT, man. We hit the next price zones. Now, again, a lot of people say, all right, the curve inverting, yada, 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 yeah, yep, yeah, okay, I got it, got it. I mean, just remember, the market's rigged. Don't pretend it's not for a minute. Like, oh, I get mad about it. People get all mad. Oh, the market's rigged. It's like, yeah, no shit. Duh. It's always been rigged. It's meant to take your money, my money. Here we go into the next resistance points. <clears throat> market's going to like this near term. Now, again, we talk about the bond velocity. If bonds get bought aggressively... Does the market rise aggressively? I don't know. Bonds and market have followed pretty much each other all year long. Near term, the resistance, support support resistance area, fibs. Here's the thing, though. Like I said, what could possibly change this? Some volatility in the commodities market. Because if the market keeps like this belief that, like, oh, hey, prices are going to come down, everything's great, then, yeah, people will buy bonds because they anticipate deflation, potentially, and also what? Weakness in the markets. We talked about this being the professional gap. Like, don't be surprised if it chopped up. Because you hear, we always said, and here's like like I'm talking about for the dollar. The first bottom isn't probably the best bottom to buy. It was this retest. And then you went. See, you talk about retest. How people, how hard it is. Like, oh, I have to pick the bottom. I'm like, no. People are like, how are you going to pick the top in the market? I'm like, don't care. Nope. Because there'll be some sort of lower high potentially. Or it'll become more obvious. The VIX. Again, 
pat myself on the back. I said, when the VIX could not break out and the market broke down in October, I was like, red alert. Like, do not be surprised if it filled this gap. Nobody believed this. And again, I don't care. Repeating patterns. Well, here, what happened last December? Oh, look at that. Dropped down. Bottomed in January, early January. <sighs> I've said this, you know, I'm on record, sweet spot. I mean, is it possible the VIX just gets stuck? Could it hit, hey, what's up, Cap? 17, 18 range? What do we need for the bottom or the top in the market? We need the new bull market mantra to be repeated by everybody. I need people like in our Discord room yelling at me like, you missed the bottom of the bull market. It's just starting, you idiot, blah, blah. Like those people, because they are the same ones who were wrong previously. Like, we need that mentality, not that mentality, we need that, like, mindset from the masses, because we need what? The market makers, if you're not familiar, again, if you're in the Discord room, go check out the VP analysis, Anna Cooley's eight rules. You need the mass media to convince everybody it's time to buy at the high so they can liquidate. Remember, the market is a liquid, or it's a liquidity-driven game, right? To move inventory, sell it to idiots at highs, buy it at lows from idiots. Like, that's the goal. When I say idiots, that can be you, me, everybody. So could the VIX... Just kind of hang out until everybody all agrees. I guess the high, I guess the bull market is starting. That's what you're waiting for. Spy. I mean, even like today's action. Most days are not for uh, jobs days or dojis. But as I talked about this morning, like if we gap down, is this a trap to just come right back up? I mean, we're at what I would consider the upside target zones. But here, think about this again. Take, take freaking pen and paper out. Remember this. When something seems obvious... That's when the market makers are very good at breaking the tendency. Here you go. Here was the bottom here. You had a one, two, three, four, five tap, slightly lower low. Then we went higher. All right, top, top, top. What are the odds that we make a higher high and get out of the channel? Minimum. And again, I put this upside target zone when we were down here in the 20 day holding up. What are the odds that we break over this channel? Right? I'm not. Don't act surprised when it does. Okay? And if, say, it does fail, say we're wrong, there will be a bounce to some sort of lower high or a retest. And you will give yourself ample opportunity to short. Okay? Clear. Clear as day. Makes sense? Remember, the first touch, being early to the party, doesn't guarantee anything. Now, sometimes you get the bigger returns if you're right early because maybe that's the best opportunity. But as you study this stuff, you realize the repeating patterns of tops, bottoms. We need an extreme. We need sentiment. Justin Pulitzer, you should follow him on Twitter. He's the only person on Twitter I actually respect decently with a decent amount of like experience that's also teaching. A lot of good people I follow. And some of them I follow just for sentiment. But he does his poll. It's literally showing <laughs> bearishness is back up. It's almost two to one. Bearishness. Everyone expects the market to pull back next week. What's up with the microphone? Am I having a... Is anyone having any issues with the microphone? Take a sip of coffee. Is it your apparatus or is it my phone? Anyone else? One person is saying it. Good on my end? Okay, that's what I thought. That happens sometimes. I don't know why. I'm sorry. Okay, cool. Everyone says it's okay. <clears throat> it must be your... Maybe restart and come back in. I don't know. It's like the internet. The internet's the interwebs, not always easy. Back to the spy. This is tough, man. This is tough. I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I, I personally believe if you can break out below the channel, you should break above it at some point. It's not going to be, again, go to Twitter. Every Twitter chartist is going, just hit the top side. It's going to fail. And it's like, I doubt it. I doubt it. Remember, I put this box in at the highs. Who remembers us calling the top? You said it's going to be short of the 200-day, at the 200-day, or go slightly higher high. Well, here you are. We got over the 200-day. Not good for bears. Here's your upside target. All right, well, throw in some more. I mean, it seems likely 420s. Man, I, every time I, I've had some like issues with my internet recently where sometimes my computer has been blowing up. I don't know if somebody's trying to hack it. I'm just kidding. I don't know. But we, I had a circle here drawn, a bunch of converging trend lines. It's also, um, here, check this out. <clears throat> Remember, we love the monthly chart. Love it, love it, love it, love it. 420. 420 for a Friday? No, not yet for me. I wouldn't be surprised. 420s. 
It's also the 618. It's also the 20 month. It's also the old upper trend channel bound. Don't be surprised. Now remember, like you break that downtrend, everyone gets bullish. Then the market makers have unlimited liquidity to sell to because there's so many people chasing. Remember, we talked about the actual money on the sideline. At one point, it was like six and a half, seven percent. That's a lot of cash on the sidelines, y'all. There's a lot of cash on the sidelines. So Q's laggard. Look at this. Gaps down. Said watch the eight day. Put that in Twitter earlier. Look, look close at the high day. This thing's a piece of crap. Tech is not the stuff to own for the long term. You can trade it. Don't own it for the long term. Once momentum is lost out of a sector, I'm telling you, it is dead money. If you don't remember Microsoft for years, they used to laugh at it every time someone would come on to like the Kramer and uh, Cudlow and Kramer show. And someone's like, what do you think of Microsoft? Oh, it's trading out of 7 PE with cash flow. And they'd be like, Haha, that thing has been stuck for 20 years, 10 years. It didn't move until, yeah, momentum. Once it's lost, it's lost. Tech is going to be in that purgatory. Well, is it possible you get up to 305? 300? I don't know. Your guess is good as mine. It doesn't look bearish, though, in my opinion. Every time it pulls back, it's just making higher highs. Now, that doji can be slightly intimidating. But today's action confirms to me that new money came in, new month. Look at that. They bought it right up. We'll see. Next week's, I mean, next week's, we're getting close. But also, we're, you got to think about like everything going on around us. Like, the Fed is in the ultimate sweet spot right now with commodity prices doing what they've done. Unemployment, where it's at. IWM, we, we talk about IWM always leads. Bottoms first, or it doesn't make a new low. Remember, bottom or top first in November. Remember, the market peaked in December, January. <clears throat> Watch for lagging. This doesn't look like it's lagging to me. If anything, it was leading. It was up a dollar today. Bounce back to the 100 day, boom. That doesn't look terrible. So it's not lagging yet. I usually don't talk about the DIA, but I've been pulling it up lately because I'm like, look, y'all, broadening pattern. It's making new highs. It's over the August highs, yet everybody's screaming bearishness. Do y'all see why I'm trying to be evidence-based, like why we do this? It's not we sit here and we go, Dan's just making this shit up. No, we internalize it. We take notes. You take notes. You go, okay, well, things don't look that bearish. Now today's gap down was met with buyers. We'll see. Would it be in, not surprising if you get someone in the 350s? Nope, not at all. GLD. Now, there is a seasonality to gold. Mid-December is usually the buy time. Usually around the Fed meetings that go on, tax loss selling, all that little stuff. Hit the 200-day. I, I mean, I about wanted to come through the Discord room and slap a few people today. Like, I didn't sell gold yesterday. I'm like, we literally hit. Talk about 0.786 is on gold. Love it. Talked about the 200-day. It's like, you have to take your money. Oh, and it gaps down to that. What do I do? I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Again, the seasonality, I mean, I, people were, were like amazed. Like, I was like, go watch the videos from like November 3rd. Literally, like, I had to buy gold here. I'm like, this is a bear trap. I hate it. I know the volume isn't huge, but look at this. Big down move, multiple retest. Then it professionally gaps. See you later. Traded around it. Sold all of it yesterday. Done. Oh, what if it goes higher? I don't give a shit. I don't care. Easy money's been made. People are like, oh, gold, gold. I mean, I'm now I'm getting like text about gold. I'm getting like all sorts of things from like gold dealers. Like th this stuff is usually when you, you get near term tops. So that's what I think. Now high, high, how low. I mean, whatever. You just made almost 18 points in the gold market on a nice quick move with a higher low. We talked about holding here. Now you get up there, you're done. Move on. Short it if you want. Yeah, I mean, some people are shorting it. I don't blame them. Just be careful. Because again, if commodities go nuts, could gold and silver rip one last time? Could you pull like the February March? -ing? Maybe. Silver on fire. Well, what now? I mean, you're you're hitting these next zones of resistance. I mean, personally, we talked about buying physical. I mean, if you're new to the channel, I'm like, man, please be stacking. Please be stacking this physical stuff. Long term, love it. Now, near term, silver's hard. Silver, I mean, that silver and that gas, man, they are both the widow makers. Near term, um, why didn't my fib save, man? I'm telling you, my chart's been driving me crazy lately. There I was figured we're not too far from the 0.618. I mean, mid-21s. We said that, I mean, I think he said that first. 
Uh, patience, 415. So yeah, yeah, potentially, definitely, my man, definitely, potentially higher. And again, but we need, like like you said, we need the, the Dow is officially in a bull market and the S&P may follow suit. Love to see that start popping up in the news. Yeah, we need to see people like, we need the news. Remember the news, the noose, <laughs> choking people, killing, murdering people. That's what the news does. I mean, how many times have you taken advice from somebody in, or some sort of news? Remember we talked about J.P. Morgan, real man of genius. At the bottom, they're literally telling everyone to sell their stock. And they bought it, and then their stock ran up 25%, 30%. Sorry, I got distracted. Silver? I mean, I I wouldn't short silver. I'd probably short miners. GDX, down for the day. Still, came back. We talked about this 200. Could it get to 31? I don't know. GDXJ, same thing. Like These miners have made pretty significant moves. Y'all do the math. 25 to 37. 50% on gold moving, $150 an ounce. Probably priced in near term. Hmm. Think about it. Yep. Short it at your own risk. Have stops. Be aware. It's, it seems likely to me that that is going to happen. So let's start looking at some of the miners. Like AG. I'm like, why isn't it making new highs? Is silver making new highs? Red flag. Doji, hammer, and kind of this weird candle today where it opens at the 100 or 20 day, 200 day, and closes near the highs. Could this be distributive? Sneaky? Maybe. I mean, I don't think eight. I mean, AG should be at ten, uh, fifty plus, right? If silver's hawking, why is it not? Huh? Somebody has the ability to keep the pressure down. I mean, you're not even over the freaking November fifteenth high. Something's wrong there. Can we put a red flag alert? AEM down forty cents today. Gapped up. Is this the novice gap? You know, we talk about gaps at different positions mean different things. Like coming off the lows, professional gap. Gap at the high, potential novice gap. Here you go. Potential novice cap? Question mark. I understand why people want to short it. I don't blame them. Newmont. If you want to short something, this is the name. Newmont is crap. If you don't remember 2008, like I do, everybody thought Newmont was like hot schnit, hot schnitzel, and then the bear market took it down the next leg. Like it was like, oh yeah, we're holding this trend line. Look at this thing. It's all bam, slam. Remember, miners aren't safe. Well, here you go. Here, like your look below the channel, little bounce. On the monthly, uh, that to me, like, again, Newmont is stuck. Like these big miners have to buy more gold miners to get higher PEs and leverage up. And they're going to probably have to use their cash and dilute their stock. It's simple. What did we say yesterday? Man, it didn't save. Darn it. Look, look where it hit. High volume highs, high volume lows. Love to retest. Hello. Hello. High volume highs and lows with big volume candles become tractor beams. Doink. I mean, is it exact? Close enough for government work. Don't bring a ruler to trading. You're welcome. Pass. Nice little pop. I don't like their deal they're doing with Yamana, silver, gold. I, I, terrible deal. The market penalized them initially, and then gold rallied, and this thing's lagged. But, I mean, think about it percentage-wise. I mean, that's a decent move, I guess, for this stock. But when, when this thing's ready to go, like, it's going to be... I mean, let me go back to the monthly. It's like... It can move. I mean, we could see, again, I mean, I think these names are going to be up hundreds of percent. Like, you're going to, people are going to be trying to trade tech, and we're going to be laughing at the hundreds of percent potential moves over months in materials. Speaking of tech, AMD, AM Dizzle. 100 day, talked about this chop zone. I, I mean, if I was long it, I'm probably gone it. But could it pop a little higher? I don't know. New video, new video, Nvidia. Thinking like Newmont, that thing is so juicy to short. Talked about like, hey, look, it doesn't look bearish. Made higher highs, comes back now, a little left, right, like topping, rounding pattern, maybe. I don't know. Rubber band man, getting a little tired. I still wouldn't. I don't know why you wouldn't get up there. 0.786, 175. SMH. If you're shorting up here, I get it. I think, still think, you know, we are over the channel now. Is the market ready to short? Now, again, should these lag? Potentially. Now, we've talked about the glut in chips that always follows. Once a bull market in chips ends, if you don't know how a bull market in chips ends and you're new, good God, get a parachute. <laughs> well, you have a glut now from all the digital currency uh, printing, growing. Cat, you're distracting me. Yeah, I get it. 
No, I'm just kidding. I don't talk to my animals. I just do it for fun with the video. <sighs> yeah, I mean, you've got way too much supply of all these electronic, you know, like servers, video cards, all this crap, whatever, SMH. I mean, semiconductors, whatever you want to call it, whatever specifics. Here you go. Like, this is the backside of Mount Everest. And people are just like, oh, I'm going to buy this for the long term. Like, good luck. Ariba Dochi. Adobe. Oh, let me go back to like SMH. Like, so if you're thinking about wearing a short, we talked about. Sorry. Somewhere in the two tw upper 220s, that was spot on. You got the retest. Is it done? I don't know. I would rather the 0.618 and 243 level, but that's just, again, you can't put yourself between where the market is going to go and when it doesn't. I always put these targets out and we have to change them because the market changes. You don't just say, well, I'm going to short it here and just blindly ignore what's going to go on everywhere else. No, that doesn't, that's not, that's tunnel vision. That's stupidity. Adobe talked about probably fills that gap up there, held the 20 day area. Whoa, too much. <clears throat> 260s or 360, 350s. Apple, all this rioting in China, game over. China stuff, it's over. They're not going to be doing any more COVID lockdowns. Telling y'all that whole, it's all for control. We talked about how it was, it was a total joke that when the peak COVID potential lockdowns, hospitality stocks in China, given Roth Khan, my man, credit for this because he posted i'm like yep you're right when that was peaking what whatever day that was tuesday monday tuesday hospitality stocks in china started ripping why the hell would they be ripping higher if china was going into lockdown mode it's because they're not somebody knows somebody always knows the nose knows <laughs> sniffing it out here we go apple crap tech but could it plop back up into the 150s maybe amazon Someone was asking why I was down today. I mean, the 20-day, it's like a tractor beam, right? I mean, these are stocks that I don't anticipate to go crazy. Could they chop and then maybe make a run? I don't know. Again, tech, the money just doesn't seem to be rotating into tech. If you miss and you don't understand how rotation, once the momentum is lost, people are buying dips and commodities constantly. Upper, left, lower right stocks like tech, they're not buying. Now, could they pop? Yeah, but they're not leading. Don't buy if you buy a leader. If you don't buy the leaders, then don't be surprised when they lag. Laggards lag, right? <clears throat> Give me two seconds. Let me sip some coffee. CRM. Here you go. Earnings pops down. Three day rule may be in effect before it holds and turns around. Maybe I don't know. Some people were talking about uh, buying this. It's like, yeah, I guess. Good luck. I wouldn't. Goog. Guggenheim. This one's been acting better. We talk about getting over the 20-day basing higher. Is that a left-right combo? I don't know. You didn't really get below. You're above 100. Still didn't get up into the 105, 106. Does this make sense? I mean, it's been beaten. It's acting better. But the name that I like better are some of the other ones that have been beaten. Like we talked about Meta. We know we talk about liquidity driven game. Remember when they came out of their earnings and they said they were going to cut off, or no, sorry, they're going to cut their workforce, they're going to lay people off. I'm like, hmm, I bet the market makers are covering their shorts and they're going to rip this at some point. I thought just the 20 day. Well, guess what? <laughs> the new target zone is clearly up in the 130s. Congratulations. But I mean, keep in mind where it's come from, where'd you go? Cotton Eye Joe. No, I mean, 385 down to 85. Market makers unwind their shorts, get idiots to sell at the lows to provide liquidity to cover the shorts, probably even go a little long, and guess what? They'll unload it as it rises. Not a bad trade if you're the market maker. From 100 down into the 87s playing this game, you are up 20%. Put a, nah, complain about that. Microsoft said probably the 270s. If the dollar is weak, weak 260s maybe? Doesn't... Again, all these stocks, and you're, just, you're playing what's the upside here? Maybe 200 day? I don't know. Bah. NDAQ. Here is one of the reasons why I realized like, I am shorting early, and I got stopped out. This is the Coinbase for the NASDAQ. Remember, like once all these stocks lose momentum, their volumes are going to plummet. Nobody's going to trade this crap. If you do not remember the mid-2000s, 2003 to 2008, there literally was jokes about tech stocks, people buying them. Like people come on and go, I like Microsoft or I like Apple. Or, I like they didn't go anywhere. A few of them did, okay, but most of them didn't nowhere. The mega cap ones. Well, guess what? 
what do you think is going to happen here, right? At some point. Today, tomorrow, I, I don't know. Y'all want to pretend that you know exactly? I don't. But I've said I like it a short, long term. And again, my initial puts I bought were March. And the stock stopped out. Said watch for the 70. I mean, this is the thing. This Somebody argue, hey, is this a head and shoulders bottom? Well, clearly it's resolving higher. Things that aren't bearish. Like, do you see how like the evidence just doesn't say like, hey, you need to be shorting. You should be shorting constantly. No, shorting constantly has led to losses constantly. So, yeah. Oh, you're heading to Forty Second Street, Lee. Hey, man, I used to go there and just pound a a peck of oysters at a time, man. Love it. Talk to you later, Lee. <clears throat> uh, man, man, I live in Colorado. Would love die for the Forty Second Street Oyster Bar in Raleigh, North Carolina, right now. Man, drink up freaking drink a few pints of beer and eat a hundred oysters that's my kind of night i can used to crush oysters um microstrategy we said what if it holds this area you probably could pop 20 30 40 50 point. i mean i don't know your math is as good as mine fill the gap maybe worse more it doesn't look like the market i mean even the trash is floating we talked about that's the last stage of the bull market run the trash floats Right, always love the uh, uh, the it meme where he's like he's you know he's looking up through the <clears throat> sewer gate and he's like it floats <laughs> like dead bodies they float yeah the dead <laughs> they float I don't know Netflix you're welcome I mean dude we have murdered Netflix we, but here's the thing the difference big base everyone likes the base you know that's what we talk about the bigger the base the bigger the shakeout weaker hands so we'll, here we talked about trend line here bought it. Talked about buying the breakout because we knew it would break out because of earnings. Nice. Came back, added it, took profits. The more it's up, more your own. We talked about this area. Look, it hit it perfectly. Talked about earlier this week. Watch the 20-day. Even if you got 20-day back here, be patient. Say, what happens if it breaks the trend line? Well, it didn't break the trend line. It played like it did. Look at that. Boom, 280, 320. Fills the gap. Here's your uptide target zone. When you get there, please don't ask me what do I do now. Take the fucking profit. Excuse my language. Take the profit. Roblox, here again, things that aren't bearish. So like even the trash is floating. I still think this gets bought out at some point. Somebody's got a ton of shares down in the 20 run range. And it's like, eh, 31, I don't care, I'll buy more. I'm telling you, I think Microsoft or somebody, like, kids are addicted to this, sadly. Probably going to go higher. Tesla, man, 42nd Street, Oyster Bar. Lee, you can't be telling me that, man. Love that place. <sighs> Tesla, what did we say? What did we say? Anyone remember? Well, it's a crappy stock. Leave it alone. But then what happened? He said, go watch the video from November 23rd. said, be careful. If this is a professional gap, it's going to resolve higher. Then people are like, oh, I got to buy it. And I'm like, please don't chase it, you stupid son of a biatches. Don't chase. He said, watch what happens when it pulls back in the 177, 180 range. You know who I'm talking about. There's basically like two people who are like, I'm buying it, chasing. I'm like, no, just wait. Of course, it came back. Here you go. How much higher could it go? I don't know, somewhere in the twos would make sense, right? Pretty obvious. All right, let's move it on. Materials. Love these names. Oh, look at these stocks. Do they look like they're leading? I mean, look, turn Tesla upside down, right? People are like, oh, what are you trading? Materials, materials, materials. That's where the money's going. These names, people don't realize these sectors are so small compared to tech. All it takes is a few billion dollars just sloshing around in the freaking buckets coming into this stuff and it moves big x here you go congratulations said what once it held the 200 day you might be getting up in the 28s now longer term this is a monster consolidation pattern inflation yeah coming if it gets into the 30s it's probably not going to break out just being aware unless unless the bull market really is on new core hey friends who own this congratulations and all these stocks look way better than tech Way better. Mucho. Muy. Better. Muy mejor, right? Muy me mejor. Here you go. We're into the next VAP zone. Or the next, like, uh, what I consider a zone of importance. You can see why. Here you go. Now you're in it. If you want to take some profit, go ahead. I mean, these don't look terrible. Terrible. Not like Charles Barkley terrible, right? They look all right. 
valet. Somebody was talking about buying longer dated calls. I'm like, well, I mean, here your consolidation zone. Leading. Looks all right. Yeah, it is. It does look good, Kat. I don't know if y'all can hear her. It's hilarious. She just screams at me for attention. <clears throat> here you go. Doesn't look that bad. Now, personally, would I buy it? No. At this point, no. Absolutely not. But if you're in it and you traded it, congratulations. Hot diggity dog. Arrow. Here, I'll pet you, sweetheart. We talked about it. Holding the 50-day. I mean, somebody's like, oh, it looks like a bear flag. I'm like, again, I play this game. I hate when someone says a flag. I'm like, I don't know what a flag is. Define it. Because you could say this is a bear flag or bull flag. You call this a, I mean, I don't know. You can define this so many ways. I just say it's a channel. Until it resolves, it's channeling up. Simple as that. Here you go. Looks okay. Not blowing over. CCJ, again, I don't like their deal with Westinghouse near term. Remember, Westinghouse had a ton of corruption in it. They're probably going to find out when they open the books that they're not as much as good stuff as they want. But we do. We, we like. We, we like. We like the stuff long term, right? We like uranium. We like nuclear power plants. This is, this could de- this could be a, one of those things where the deal uh, could be stuck. CF, you're welcome. Put out an alert. It said 103 under 103 today. Gift. Well, you fill the gap uh, basically close enough. What was the exact low? Uh, didn't get to fill the gap, but I mean it's on your red alert. Like looking for adding points on here because this is again stocks that are strong. The longer it bases here, the bigger the up move. I keep telling you guys, if it holds this zone, it's going to go. It's going to go. And if it goes, it's not going to be a small move. Keep that in mind. These are the stocks. Remember, look at this. A bear market started in December of 2021. Does this look bearish? You wouldn't even know it. <clears throat> Mosaic. Leaders lead. Holding up. Looks okay. I mean, this one's tight. A little tougher. A little tighter. We'll see what happens. If you're again, be patient. NTR talked about the gap down from earnings being the ultimate low. Twenty days a key. Looks all right to me. Does it come back down here at some point? Oof. Well, again, if the market pulls back, absolutely. But look what it did. It holds the volume at price zones. Retail selling, market makers accumulating. Now they need to distribute. Mark that sucker up. Hell yeah, they do. AA Aaron, another great trade. We talked about this. What is this, Dan? Well, this was earnings. We said somebody had the capacity to stop the drop, stop their number, whatever their numbers were, and buy the absolute dog crap out of it. And they bought, what, 35 million shares traded that day? I don't know. We talked about every dip was a buy. Well, here you go. And it just keeps resolving. Look at today. Drops down, brr, close at the high of the day. Somebody knows something about aluminum. That's all I can say on that. <laughs> Let's get into it. Let's keep going. Let's keep moving along. What do, what do we want to see next? XBI, here we go. I mean, a lot of people are like, ah, man, market's going to tank. Look at this thing. It's in a trap. It's like it's not even making new lows. Now it's back at the range highs. <laughs> Things that aren't bearish. Again, people want to like just absolutely trash me for saying, oh, you're you're bullish. Like, you're an, a perma bull. No, I'm, I'm perma evidence-based. This stuff doesn't look bearish. Now, again, take profits the more you're up, but don't sit here and say, oh, this looks all bearish. Eh, wrong. You've been an idiot. I've been that in that position before, an idiot, where I'm literally trying to short, and it just goes higher, and it goes higher, and it goes higher every time. Well, guess what? Sometimes you, I said this today. When in doubt, and you're digging your own grave, all you have to do is put the shovel down. Stop trading. Stop doing what you've been doing. XLF, what we say? Again, another broadening pattern. Here's your upside. I mean, this target, I mean, I had this from the lows. You're welcome. We'll see what happens here. Now, if the market's going to roll over and the economy is going to hit the crapper, the banks are going to own it. Don't be surprised by that. But where's the short point? I mean, eh, I've said I really want the FAS up in the 90s. And now, again, I don't get always what I want. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, the XLF is technically there. And I said this yesterday's recap. If you want a short, the XLF, it makes sense. Just don't be surprised if it goes a little higher. I'm not seeing anything too crazy yet, but broadening pattern, top, 
0.618. This seems like it is pulling bulls in. Today's action not as bullish as some of the other names. We not agree? It did not close anywhere like the IWM near the highs. Red alert. Remember, financials typically lead. Okay? Now, now, does this mean now that the whole market has to turn over and get gutted like a fish? No, it could be just a pullback. Just keep that in mind. Please, respect your surroundings. Stop projecting what you want and try to see what, we'll see what happens. Trade around your positions. Like, don't be all or nothing traders where you feel like you have to, like, be correct. That pressure to be absolutely correct all the time, dangerous. Hey, Banff guy. Hey, dude, thank you for the super chat. You know I do this for free all the time. I don't care. I appreciate the donations because I know you guys who study stuff, you don't realize, like, your tuition bill will never be seven figures like mine. I promise you that. Up and downs. You'll never have the emotional problems because you're literally getting the information that's going to hopefully keep you in a position. All right? Keep you in position. Here you go. Morgan Stanley, backside of the trend line. Old trend line. Oh, old yellow. This is a very old one. You're in the upside target zone. I still don't know why you couldn't get to the mid-90s. JP Morgan, real man of genius. Remember I talked about at the lows. They literally were telling everyone to sell. Remember they were telling everyone to buy puts in front of the CPI. Remember they were telling everyone to buy puts in front of the feds. They sold puts left and right. They just fleeced all their clients. Great quarter. They're going to have an amazing quarter. Amazing. Now maybe that's what it's waiting for. Earnings. When is earnings? Probably going to be in January 13th. <laughs> January, mid-January. We'll see. Does it have to, again, January effect? Typically bullish? Does it have to roll over? I don't know. Let's keep it going. Uh, man, solar. I mean, a lot of people wanted to short solar. And it's like, man, you can't do it. It's not personal. It's just if oil and gas are about to take off, commodity issues, like these names aren't acting like the world, this stuff is about to implode. That's why it's hard sometimes. And that's why you can use solar as like, the side thing, like, hmm, wouldn't solar be crashing if oil and gas were really going to tank? Question mark. Holding up. Holding up. Why is this thing right here? Novice gap. I guess you technically had them right there. But here's your professional gap. Keeps going. Holding up. Doesn't look like it's about to tank. Today's action, man, it looks like a hot dog, right? He's got the hot dog in the middle and you got your two green buns. I don't know. Need more information. Sometimes the day just doesn't know. ENPH, warn people, please don't short this. Please don't short this. Like, what would be the best way to get people to absolutely chase this thing and get murdered? Break above the monthly channel. Break above the monthly channel. Break above it. Break out. <clears throat> oh, man, why is uh, my Fib extensions not on there? Sorry. Break out. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, here you go. Get up into these Fibbies. Get people really locked in. Oh, I'm buying this for the long term. I'm buying this like Tesla. Yeah, right. <laughs> Sedge, even this piece of junk. Said, put a text out this morning on Twitter, like, watch the 308, 315, whatever this area is. I mean, it's a big range. Holy crap. Got into it, backed off again. Interesting. First solar. <sighs> I don't know what to tell y'all. I mean, I thought it was an awesome short ear. <laughs> was wrong. Thought it was an awesome short up here. Wrong. Thought the 164 is because it's a fib on the monthly. Wrong. This could be somewhat disconcerting, though, near term. Remember, like, JP Morgan was downgrading it. Ripped right back on them. Maybe they're not going to have the amazing quarter, but it's pretty solid. At this point, two times range, 175 plus. I don't know why we wouldn't get there. Uh, HYG, I don't know, it's just on my charts. I'd like thinking about like, remember, this is corporate debt. Corporate debt typically, you know, moves with the market. Does that, does this look like it's dead? I don't know. It just seems to be chopping and making higher highs, higher lows. All right, let's end it as we always do on the fun stuff. Oil, gas. <clears throat> Tax credits, yeah, they're always helping solar. Remember, we were anticipating a, a red wave. It didn't happen. When the red wave didn't happen. Shorting solar doesn't make as much sense at the moment. Right, at the moment. Oil. All right. Talked about big boy. Do you all see it? Do I have to like circle it? Like zing, 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 zing. Big boy. Somebody. Somebody. And this ain't me. This ain't lupus. This ain't a few people in the Discord. No. This is somebody stopping it down. You get the retest? Holy crap. 
What a gift. Now you get up some, you know, in like mid, like 82, 83 range on oil. Pulls back going to the OPEC meeting. The best trap. What's the best direction before a trap? What's the best direction? If you want to see a trap, the first direction is the side getting trapped. Right? I don't think the Georgia election really matters, man. They're going to they're gonna hit the Senate. They've got the vote. they got, what's her name? Kamala. Deciding vote. This doesn't look that bad to me. Near term. We'll see what happens. Now, if it drops on Monday, holy crap. Watch the 68 level. This looks good to me. This looks really interesting to me. Because, again, if OPEC does what I think they're going to do, and it probably doesn't even matter, this is a big base that's going to probably resolve higher. Now, again, now that volume looks small compared to Ukraine, naturally. Right? But now? does it Now does it look that small? I don't think so. Nat Gas talked about, man, this is just brutal sometimes. Buy, I mean, buying it yesterday didn't add today. People were like, oh, you should add. I'm like, I'm, I'm in a loser. It just needs to hold this range. I'm not going to, like, dig it deeper. And now, after the fact, it's easy to say. Some people talked about selling puts today. I'm like, well, that's probably the play right there. Selling the 1918 puts. <clears throat> and then it'll come back. This is cotton to wheat. We'll see what happens here. I I didn't see the close. I was uh, Castle Rock doing a showing for this sweet, sweet, sweet lady who's buying a house with me. Love working with people that are cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't see anything. Not seeing anything. We'll see. Let's talk about some of the oil names, though. Exxon, Mobile. I mean, it's just high and tight, man. Like, this just doesn't look that bad. High and tight. I mean, don't you think if oil and gas were on a ton turnover, like, this stuff would just be like, blah, timber. No, it more looks like the choppiness before, like, the the, the rip. Y'all see this? Like, the choppiness before the rip? What did Oxy do today? Yeah, this thing is just holding high and tight. <clears throat> Doesn't look that terrible. I did on PXD. Remember, I'm going to go into some live chat for a couple minutes after this. This is interesting because we talked about like, I'm just like begging for it to close over the 100 day. It just keeps hitting the 200 day backing off. Accumulating down here. This thing, people don't realize like, I like it because you see the monthly, you go, why would you like it? You're like, oh, that's why you like it, Dan, because it's been a good stock. It's always, it's acting better than a lot of other oil stocks. And this thing freaking moves. That monthly doesn't look bad to me. Here you go. Now with the daily... It's a flag. No, it's just channeling down. Whenever it breaks out, we'll, we'll see. Check this out. I've said this, I think, about a, a dozen times. Somebody stopped it. Somebody stopped it and ripped it. Somebody is stopping it from dropping. When does it go? I don't know. This is why it's so hard. We're like, I'm buying next week's options. And I'm like, may the force be with you. May you be lucky. We'll see. It looks fine to me. Hold the 230s. I think you're good. All right. Please do yourself a favor. When you are winning, take money out of the market. Pay yourself. Pay your taxes. Treat your family well. I promise. That is the goal of trading. It's not to grow this monster account and getting lucky. Because if you get lucky, great. But the goal is to treat this like a business. Once you start making money, please reach out to me. Let me help you find a property, investment property, anywhere. Again, I'll get a referral. I'll be, you'll have two agents, not just one. That is the goal here is to help folks realize that your goal is to turn paper gains into this stupid trading computer that you have or mine and buy houses with it. And then figure out a way ultimately to get cash flow, to pay yourself, to sit here and do nothing like I do some days. Sometimes we don't trade. Sometimes there's nothing to do. And we still get paid because we have residual incomes. That is the goal here. Real wealth is built on real estate. I say this all the time. Again, Livermore would have never gone bankrupt if he had a thousand houses or rentals or condos or whatever. No, he just kept growing his accounts and market and cash. Eh, wrong. All right, I'm going to go and open this up. I appreciate everybody. Have a great weekend. Love you guys. Hey, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, stop by the Discord room. A link is in the description below. Also, if you'd like to help support more free content, your PayPal link is in the description as well. I appreciate your continued support of the channel.